Hello and welcome to Unit 7, where we will be focusing on the chemistry of solutions, or solution chemistry. Now in general chem, especially first year chem, like a high school course, <coughs> for the most part, when you hear solutions, you can assume we're talking about aqueous solutions, which means the solvent in this case, or the substance that does the dissolving, is going to be water which is often referred to as the universal solvent. The picture you see here is a good example of one of the most common aqueous solutions you're ever going to hear about, salt water, sodium chloride dissolved in water. <clears throat> now, as we do with every unit, I want you to focus on the vocabulary first. I'm going to have you pause this vodcast, go through and put a plus next to any of the terms that you know, that I could bet you 10 bucks and you'd get the definition correct. Um, these terms that get pluses uh, definitely should include any of the terms that are review, terms from previous units. And then a check next to any terms you think you could get uh, from context clues, if you read it in a sentence. And then if it's a word you don't know, it looks completely foreign to you, just uh, don't put anything next to it at all. So plus if you know it, check if you can figure it out in a sentence, and nothing if you don't know it. Go ahead and pause uh, and do that now, and I'll come back to you. Okay, welcome back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what I think Joe Average Chemistry student, first year student, <coughs> may have. This doesn't have to be what you have, but if it's me and I'm a first year chemistry kid, uh, this is my first time going through and focusing on solution chemistry. Alloy, I've seen that. Okay, that's going to be a plus, maybe a check. We've covered this one before a little bit. We've talked about alloys involving metals, the most common one that we've uh, talked about is steel. You should know alloy. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and erase the check. The lab we did, it's your brass, not mine. When we made the gold penny, that was an alloy, and you had to define it then, so that's going to be a plus. Aqueous, we've talked about. We talked about mixtures. Aqueous solutions are homogeneous mixtures involving water. Boiling point. <clears throat> This one you should know, we've talked about phase changes in the previous um, unit. Boiling point elevation, colligative properties, I'm going to go with foreign. I don't think most of you know what those are. Maybe you could figure out boiling point elevation in a sentence, but I'm going to leave it. Colloid, I don't think most of you know that. Some of you may. Uh, you'll see it later on in this unit. It's a special kind of mixture. Uh, again, some of you may be familiar with the fact that milk, blood, two examples of colloids, but <clears throat> I'm going to leave that one blank, too. I think most first-year chem kids would notice, know that term. Concentrated, I'm, I'm going to put a check next to that one. Concentrated and concentration. Um, concentration, I think you could definitely figure it out in a sentence. I think most of you know what it means to be concentrated or what the concentration of, say, a solution is, <clears throat> but... I'm not so sure that for 10 bucks you could define it, if I put you on the spot. A dilute could be a, a verb or an adjective. I'm going to go ahead with a, a check on this one. Could be a plus. I'll put a plus or a check. Okay? Um, you can dilute something or something can be dilute. Free point depression. Um, this is not a, a mental state for the freezing point. I'm going to go ahead and leave that one uh, as a... There's nothing as, as a foreign concept for you guys. We haven't really talked about it. Some of you may be familiar with it, especially because uh, it's always wintertime when we're talking about this, and we salt the roads <coughs> so that we can accomplish a freezing point depression. But again, it's still something you, you're probably familiar with it in practice, but not by definition. Heterogeneous homogeneous. Review, review. Insoluble. Um, I'm going to go with a check on that, but that could easily be a plus. Missable, that's a nothing for now. Mixture, you better know mixture. That's review, uh, one of the two types of matter. you got mixtures and pure substances. <clears throat> Molarity is a no for most of you, but some of you may have picked up on this along the way. Parts per million, uh, you've heard about it. I'm sure you've heard about it, but sharks can smell or sense blood in the water at like three parts per million or something like that. So I think you're at least familiar with that one. Percent by mass. We have done multiple labs involving percent by mass. If you know what percent by mass is, 
then you know what percent by volume is. Same exact thing, except switch the word volume with mass in the definition. Precipitate. That one I'm going to give a check. You know what it means to precipitate, like weather-wise. Very similar definition here, but in chemistry terms, it's a little, just a tiny bit different. It's not, only because it's not <clears throat> a matter of weather. We're going to get a little more specific and chemistry specific. Saturated, I think you guys could definitely uh, use it in a sentence. I'm not sure that you could define it for, for ten, uh, $10, but maybe even $1. Solubility, soluble. Uh, these are terms I think you guys kind of know, but again, defining it sometimes sometimes can be trickier. We, we learn that with words like heat and temperature. A solution, you definitely should know. It involves mixtures. Solute and solvent, I'm going to go ahead and put checks. I know you've seen them, and I'm sure that you could figure them out in a sentence, or even use them in a sentence, but again, defining them can be tricky. Supersaturated. Now, I'll tell you that a lot of you probably think you know what supersaturated means, but very, very, very few of you do. It's a very unique, um, what do I want to call it, balance or imbalance condition, if you want to put it that way. And we will do a really cool demo of this uh, throughout this unit, or later on this unit. Suspension, uh, I'm going to leave it, because I, I think in chemistry terms, you guys really don't know. It's not when you can do something really bad in school, and then they don't let you come to school anymore. That's, that's different. Chemistry terms, it's different. Tyndall effects, a definite no. And unsaturated, again, I think it's one of those check marks. So we got 30 terms here. And out of 30 terms, we're looking at basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 21. 21 out of 30 that are either you know it or you can figure it out. That's a good thing. It means prior knowledge, as you guys can see, this cumulative course, this cumulative effect that we build and build and build, uh, it has its perks because now here we are in Unit 7, and instead of 14 out of 30 or 12 out of 30, you're looking at 21 out of 30 terms where you have prior knowledge. So let's build on that. Let's make sure these checks turn into pluses. Well, let's make sure everything turns into pluses. Okay, that's our goal for this unit in terms of the vocab and terminology. Hello.